Blessings, people of God, blessings. I pray that you're having a wonderful day today. My heart is kind of heavy um, on the subject of sexual immorality, and I, I believe that God's heart is heavy about the subject also. Um, in particularly, but not limited to, homosexuality. And as I was in church today, I asked God, I'm like, why is the subject not addressed? Why is it not addressed? And he said that it's not addressed because people don't know how to handle it. People have not been seeking him enough in that area. And then those that have been set free because they're still bound by shame that they don't come forward. But one thing that the Lord spoke to me that I heard him say very clearly today is that he said there are parents who are wondering why their children cannot be set free from this spirit of homosexuality. But in all actuality, if they look back over their own life, their sexual immorality opened the door for their children to go into homosexuality. They may not have been in homosexuality, they may not have been gay, they may not have been lesbian or transgender, but they were in fornication, they were in masturbation, they were in adultery, they were into pornography. We have to be mindful of the doors that we open to our children because those same very people will be the ones pointing fingers at and saying, I can't believe that my child turned out like this, but you were the one that actually opened the door with your own sexual sin. Repent is what I heard the Lord say. Repent for your own sexual sin. Repent. It starts there. Close the door to your own sexual sin. And even if you're no longer engaging, repent to the Lord for opening that door that is affecting your child today. We have to learn to deal with this subject in the churches because church is a hospital. It doesn't make sense. We have these programs for AA. We do not have any programs. I don't hear really, really many ministries that deal with sexual immorality, but it is running rampant from the pulpit to the pews. It is not okay. Our body is the temple of God. Galatians 5 and 19 says, don't you realize those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Those living a sexually immoral life. That sexual immorality is very important to God. It is sin against our own temple. Our body is the temple of God. Sex outside of marriage is not okay. It will cost you your whole eternity. It will cost you to go to hell for eternity. It is not worth it. Masturbating in the midnight hour, watching porn, none of these things lust. This spirit of sexual perversion is running rampant in the churches, in the people of God, in our homes, and we have to do something about it. It needs to be exposed. We have to learn to deal with it from a biblical standpoint not judging people and condemning them to hell, but exposing the truth behind that thing, casting out devils, casting out demons, walking in authority, not feeling sad because our children are caught up in these things, but learning how to pray, learning how to fast, learning how to praise the enemy out of your house. Everywhere that my feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. The Bible says the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I fight for my children by staying in the will of God on purpose. Let's be mindful of the things that we've opened the door to that are affecting our children. It's so easy to point fingers at them and say, oh, I can't believe he's acting that way. What doors are you living with open that are affecting your children come out of agreement with the devil on purpose because your babies are getting caught up in the web of your life and the residue is still on a lot of lives I've seen people that say that they're delivered from homosexuality but the residue is still there people that say that they're delivered from fornication but the residue is still there they say they're not sleeping around no more, but their clothes are still so tight. Their dress is so tight. Their makeup is still alluring and drawing people in. Their hairstyles are still alluring and drawing people in. That spirit of seduction still lives on them. So you're not doing it anymore, but you're still carrying the spirit of seduction in your ways. You have to be washed from the residue of that thing. 
We have to be mindful to continue to submit our wills daily. Dying to self daily is something that we have to do. We have to say, Lord, search my heart if you find anything that is unlike you, even if I still like it. Take the desire away. The Lord is teaching me about dropping your weapons. When you have been a seductress, when you have slept with people outside of marriage, you have been a seductress. When you have seduced people, lured people in with your looks, with your beauty, with your body, with your makeup, with your hair, with the way you move, with your words, with your eyes, you have to drop your weapons. You do not get to get free from that thing and keep your weapons. Where do you ever see somebody free from crack cocaine still carrying a coke pipe or a crack pipe? It doesn't make sense. Drop your weapons. If you used to paint your face with makeup on and it seduced people, and I know people say, oh, it don't, it's, not, it's not that serious. It is that serious because you're still carrying the weapons. You're still drawing people in. And then you're wondering why certain people are attracted to you because you're still drawing them in. You're still, still wearing these hairstyles that are drawing in men that are full of the spirit of lust. You still look like lust. That's why you're still drawing them in. Your mannerisms are still of your old man. You have to be made new in every way on purpose. Drop your weapons. They are costing you something. Seek the Lord in this area and ask them, am I still carrying the weapons from the place you delivered me from? Do I still look like my old man? Yes, it's a heart change and it's an inward thing, but it also affects the outside of us. I was the queen of seduction. I used to say anybody I set my mind to is going down. And guess what? It did. So I cannot carry those old weapons. My skin tight dresses had to go. My super, super high stilettos had to go. My makeup, it had to go. And guess what? God called me out of makeup while I still liked it. My wigs and weaves, they had to go. Because it's a greater thing attached to them. It still carries, the, those are the weapons that I use. Those are the tools that I used to draw people away. And not that I set up and thought about, hey, I'm going to put on this pink lipstick and I'm going to draw somebody away today. No, that was not my thought pattern. But it still was what it was. Drop your weapons on purpose. That is the word of the Lord. Be mindful what things are still active in your life. I love you, people of God. Please make sure that you share this message if it blessed you. And I will talk to you soon.